How's it going guys? This is Nick from uh, Laid Loss. I am grabbing a GoPro out of my bag so I can go give it to poor old Jamie to give him a task for the video for uh, this week or whichever week this gets posted. The reason is that those of you who were astute and paying attention to the Yosemite ride uh, video that Matt put together would notice that mine was not the only new bike on that trip. So uh, as such, uh, Jamie has a little bit of talking, a little bit of discussion uh, to do for us about his new Road King special and I need to enlist his help in getting some footage so I can edit everything and put it together for us. So heading over to Jamie's Bay with this and uh, first question I'm going to ask him is really going to be uh, why are you back on a bagger because this is not his first bagger so I've got to figure out what it is that's so special about baggers because Andrew keeps telling me I'm going to end up with one eventually and uh, you know, he's probably right. All roads lead to baggers, I think is the expression. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I don't lose a little bunch of money when I saw my low rider, I guess, right? So uh, let me go over there, give him this and uh, see what happens. Back on the bagger. So one of the, well, there's a few different reasons why actually, or a couple, but uh, I wanted to get something that I could tour out of, maybe even do a little camping, you know, a little more recreational type riding, stuff like that. And also the main thing, you know, 80 to 90% of my riding's commuting. So I wanna make sure that, uh, you know, that it's a bike that I can commute on and split lanes here. The big help was that uh, the freeway job was finally done and the carpool lane opened. So now the, uh, the Sportster isn't, necessarily needed uh, to have a good commute. It makes it a lot easier now with the bigger bike and uh, very happy with the change I've made. Um, you know, this bike seems to do everything that I wanted it to. Uh, it commutes well. Um, you know, I've had the road glides and uh, I've had the FLHT you know, fairing bikes and for whatever reason, even though the chassis is so similar, um, you know, splitting lanes on the Road King just seems a bit easier. Um, it feels like a smaller bike, even though it's really pretty much the same wheelbase and everything. But uh, yeah, so far it's working out really well. The first thing for me is, uh, especially with my size and everything, is tailoring the bike to fit me. I'm just above 5'6", and uh, you know, the stock handlebars were really wide for me, really uncomfortable. And uh, so I was looking for something, you know, within the 29 to 31 inch width range, uh, which fits me well, and about a 12 inch rise, you know. So I came up, uh, you know, I found some bars that look pretty good for what I was looking for, which is uh, made by Todd Cycles. And uh, so far I like them. They seem to be very comfortable, a lot better than the stock ones. And uh, from there, you know, the uh, next thing, of course, you always want some sound on the bike. You know, you, you, know, you want to get some exhaust on it. And I went with the Cobra exhaust. They're slip-ons. Uh, I think the fit and finish is really good. And the sound, I think, is actually really good. It's not overpowering for the long trips, uh, but it just sounds, sounds nice. Moving on would be uh, suspension. You know, that's always a big issue for me as well um, because I'm a lightweight rider. To get these bikes to handle and not beat me up so bad, I have to go with different suspension on most of my bikes. On this particular build, I decided to do the Wilbur suspension. I've you know, had the chance to install some and ride a few bikes with it and not even quite set up for my weight. And they felt much better than the stock setup for me. So uh, we reached out and uh, got some Wilbur suspension on this thing and I'm actually thoroughly impressed with it. Uh, I can't say that there's anything that it does weird or anything that it does bad. It just feels good on pretty much everything I've done so far. One last thing I, that I did add actually was uh, the upgraded oil cooler uh, fan combination. And uh, I don't have an exact reading on it at this this point but uh, just riding it back to back you could definitely feel a bit of a difference you know it's not night and day but you can feel a difference in the cooling it seems to work pretty good yeah so one you know another thing I did on this bike was uh, I wanted to do you know obviously get some type of windshield seeing that the bike does not come with one so for a touring bike you, you need some type of wind coverage I think so uh, I did go with the wind splitter the Harley wind splitter windshield uh, the only bummer is it's obsolete probably going to be very hard to get uh, hopefully they'll come out with something newer better I don't know but this one works really well for me um, that in combination with these uh, you know the fork uh, mounted or you know the fork mounted wind deflectors um, they only come in chrome so I did have to have them powder coated black and I know not everybody's going to love the look of them but they work so well that I have a hard time thinking of taking them back off and you kind of just get used to it but uh, they really do work that well for me. Um, I'm not sure if this combination will work as well for everyone but uh, with my size and the way things are set up 
Um, this bike for me is actually uh, better in the wind and high speed highway riding than my Rogue Glide was, which is really hard to say, but because uh, that bike was amazing, as most people know. Um, and also to help me with my uh, short stature was the uh, the solo reach seat. Um, that makes a, a big big difference for me as well. Just kind of get me in the sweet spot, the comfortable zone. And then also to help us uh, fitment, I also went with the PSR adjustable hand levers. You know, it's another thing that they have a different feel to them, but uh, you have the adjustability to get the throw that you want. They, they work really well. So far, so good. I really like them. Another must for me on any bike that I do is uh, I really want the brightest, best lighting that I can get. And I'm very thankful that Harley came out with their new uh, turn lamps, front and rear. They're really good, they're really bright. I did notice from day one when I, uh, you know, I rode the bike without those and then I put them on after. And I could actually tell a difference when going to split lanes to, you know, on my way home. People would actually see you quicker and they would actually give you room and they seem to acknowledge that you're back there. I'm a big fan of the bright LED lights, everything you could do to get noticed. Um, sometimes I think it's more effective than sound in loud bikes. Uh, being seen is, is, has a lot to do with it. And then when you're up near the vehicles, of course, it helps if they can hear you. So I do have the front and rear LED Harley lamps, head, or turn lamps. And then uh, also on the, the rear fascia, on the rear fender, I also went with the optional Harley uh, brake light as well. So now you have all three lights in the back you know, that, that break, and then you have your left and right turn, of course, and running. Yeah, eventually I would like to uh, do a little something to the engine, of course. I think most every bike I've ever had, I, I end up doing something. Um, it does run really well, but I would like to at least do a stage two and a tuner, you know, and by the time it gets approved at that point, I may decide to go bigger. So we'll have to wait and see what I do on there, but at a minimum, I'm gonna do a stage two uh, torque kit, you know, the, the torque cam. I've always been very impressed with the, uh, the, the rideability and the, the feel and the, the bang for the buck. It seems to be a really good setup. Yeah, as some of you may have seen in the past, I did have a, uh, 2018 Softail Heritage. That bike was really good as well. It was uh, narrow enough to where I could split lanes and commute and do everything. It still felt at the time uh, not quite what I was looking for, I guess, for my daily commute. It did do everything very well. The main difference is that I feel, um, you know, the, the heavier chassis, the heavier Road King chassis just seems to be a bit more planted, especially at high speed highway riding for extended periods of time. It's just a bit more stable, more planted. And I do like the isolation, uh, having the powertrain rubber mounted instead of solid mounted. Um, even with the balancers and everything on the soft tails, I felt a little extra vibe. It's nothing that's big or that anyone really complains about that I know of. But uh, just the overall, if I was comparing them, you know, you feel a little less vibes and a little more planted on the road. Um, especially when you're going to higher speeds. Yeah, the Road King Special has always been, you know, on my radar as a bike I'd love to have. Um, Definitely a little more expensive, so I, I needed to, you know, wait until I was ready to, to make that purchase. And then I had to figure out what I needed for the wind coverage and to get everything dialed in. And once I think I, I figured everything out of what I felt would work for me, I went ahead and pulled the trigger on this. And then what it was that really got me is the uh, Deadwood green color, you know. I knew I liked the bike, I liked the style, and I knew the potential of it. But for me, for some reason, the Deadwood green came on board and I stared at it for about three months you know, talking about it and, you know, acting as if I wanted to buy it. And then uh, finally got to a point where I, I pulled the trigger and I really couldn't be happier. You know, this whole bike came together aesthetically, uh, the way it rides, you know, everything about it. Um, I, I, I would say it's probably the best bike that I've owned to this point. And I'm, uh, I'm very happy with this.